The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Werner Tobin. Welcome to Soybean School. Uh, glyphosate supply has been a hot topic this winter as growers look for ways to navigate through short supplies of this critical weed control tool. Um, on this episode, we'll take a look at some of the best practices that can help growers make the most of the glyphosate they have available this year. And for insight on this topic, I can think of no one more qualified than University of Wealth weed Sci- scientist Dr. Peter Sikama. He joins me now. Hi, Peter. Hey, it's great to have you on Soybean School. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, I'm uh, looking forward to it, Bernard. Hey, now one of the strategies growers will be employing this this season to manage glyphosate will be to use minimal uh, label rates, Peter. Let's let's talk about some strategies to ensure growers get the most out of their glyphosate, you know, that they're applying. Um, First question, you know, how important is it to know the weed species in a field to make sure you're using an effective rate? So that's a really good question, Bernard. And glyphosate, just like any other herbicide, has its strengths and weaknesses. Glyphosate is the most effective on grass species. And relatively, you would need less glyphosate to control a grass weed compared to an annual broadleaf weed. And the weeds that you would typically need the highest rates of glyphosate to uh, control would be the perennial broadleaf weed. So you need to adjust your rate of glyphosate depending on weed species composition in each individual field. Now, Peter, what about application timing? How important is it to spray those weeds when they're small? Yeah, glyphosate is just like any other post-emergence herbicide. You get the best activity when you apply the herbicide when the weeds are relatively small. Let's say so they're up to three or four inches in height. And as weeds get taller, you need a higher rate of glyphosate to get the same level of control. What about uh, more on some more on spray timing, Peter? You know, it's you know obviously our timing is often determined by the weather and wind conditions. Um, but time of day is critical for glyphosate effectiveness. What does your research your research tell us here? So almost every single post-emergence herbicide has a time of day effect, and almost every post-emergence herbicide you will have a decrease in herbicide efficacy. If the herbicides are applied really early in the morning, let's say 6 o'clock in the morning, and the efficacy goes down if you apply them late in the evening, let's say 9 o'clock at night or midnight. Almost every post-emergence herbicide, you will get the best weed control when you spray between 10 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. And the herbicide that has the greatest time of day effect would be Liberty in the uh, herbicides that we've evaluated. Glyphosate has a much smaller time of day effect than Liberty does, but even glyphosate has a time of day effect. And uh, herbicide efficacy is maximized when you spray during the warmest, brightest sunlit hours of the day. And uh, so, yeah, time of day does have a small effect on the efficacy of glyphosate. Um, when it comes to getting the most out of your glyphosate, Peter, how important is, is water quality? Do we have to worry about hard water? So uh, water quality is very important for two reasons. First of all, the, what you mentioned, Bernard, uh, hard water that has lots of calcium, magnesium, sodium, iron ions in it. Glyphosate is a salt formulation. It dissociates in water. It forms a negatively charged anion in water, and it complexes with those cations in water. So you could get a glyphosate calcium complex that forms in water if you have hard water, and that complex is not taken up as efficiently by the plant as some other salt complexes. So water quality is really important. The second thing that I should mention in terms of water quality, uh, Bernard, is you don't want to use a, let's say, a muddy uh, source of water. You want to have clean water. 
because even clay in water can complex with glyphosate and reduce the activity. Peter, when, when tank mixing um, with other herbicides, are there, you know, are there products that can tie up glyphosate and, and make it less effective? Yes, and for sure, antagonism can occur when you tank mix glyphosate with other herbicides, and I will say with some foliar fertilizers. So in terms of with other herbicides, mostly it is the clay-based formulations that will antagonize the activity of glyphosate. And in our trials, we see it most frequently with something like atrazine or Sencor. So clay-based formulations of atrazine or Sencor can antagonize glyphosate and you will get reduced control of dandelions in your pre-plant burn down if you tank mix with those herbicides. In addition to that, Bernard, there are some, and I want to stress the word some, there are some foliar fertilizers that will dramatically antagonize glyphosate and you should be very careful in terms of uh, uh, combining glyphosate with a foliar fertilizer. Make sure that you have information from your supplier that that particular blend does not antagonize glyphosate. In some of our experiments, because of antagonism with a foliar fertilizer, there was such a dramatic decrease in herbicide efficacy that it resulted in up to a 48 bushel per acre yield loss in corn just due to antagonism. Peter, let's let's talk about uh, plan B, you know, for growers who do not have the glyphosate, you know, supplies that they'd like, uh, will they, you know, require more reliance on pre-plan, pre-emerge, you know, early post programs, you know, your research says they're quite effective. So my thought there is if you have a limited supply of glyphosate, I would be really tempted to utilize that glyphosate in my pre-plant burndown application simply because there aren't any other herbicides that are as efficacious and as broad spectrum as glyphosate in terms of your pre-plant burndown. If you're growing corn or soybean, I would really recommend in 2022 that farmers put down their best soil applied herbicide. And what I mean by best, it's got to be a herbicide program that has activity on both grass as well as broadleaf weeds. It's got to match the weed spectrum in each individual field on your farm. And if you get an activating rain event with some of those soil applied herbicides, you could be clean right through till harvest time. Obviously, you want to scout the field frequently during the growing season. And if there are weed escapes from that soil applied program that you use, then you may have to come back with a post-emergence herbicide. If glyphosate's available, you could use it. Or alternatively, there are quite a few uh, effective post-emergence herbicides uh, other than glyphosate in both corn and soybean that you could use to address those weed escapes. Peter, final question. What about uh, ammonium sulfate here and, and adjuvants? How, um, as you say, how careful do we have to be when we bring those into the program? Uh, really good question, Bernard. And we have done numerous experiments over the years looking at the benefit of adding ammonium sulfate to glyphosate. And I want to qualify my answer. When glyphosate's used at the label rate in Roundup Ready corn or Roundup Ready soybean, so when I say the label rate, that's 0.67 uh, liters per acre of Roundup weather max, we see a very little increase in efficacy when uh, Roundup is applied at the label rate. And in all previous research that we've done, there's a bigger increase in weed control by adding the same dollar value of glyphosate than adding AMS. I fully appreciate that in 2022, the uh, price structure is completely different. And because of that, it may change the uh, outcome of that earlier research that we've done. Regardless, in the work that we've done, uh, we've seen a very nominal increase in efficacy by adding ammonium sulfate when glyphosate's applied at the label rate. And we have looked at a number of different adjuvants with uh, glyphosate. 
And most of the time, with the formulation sold in Ontario, they're considered to be fully loaded uh, glyphosate formulations. That means they do have an aggressive adjuvant system in them. And we have a hard time showing a benefit of adding an additional adjuvant to glyphosate. Once again, having said that, we did some preliminary research in 2021, just last year. And this adjuvant is currently unregistered, so I won't say its trade name. But in that research, uh, quite surprisingly to me, there was a benefit of adding the adjuvant to glyphosate. And we will be repeating that research in 2022, and we will share that information with Ontario farmers. Well, hey, Peter, um, some great insights here. I um, always uh, you know, appreciate you stopping by and joining us on Soybean School. Oh, you're most welcome, Bernard. I enjoy having the opportunity of sharing the information from our research program with Ontario farmers. <laughs>